In this video, I'm going to take you through the pilot tone detector on our Connect Series amplifiers. So on my screen here, I'm already connected to the web UI. I've got an amp pulled up here and I'll just show you how to set up the pilot tone detector on channel one. You can see here I've got some content already playing through. I have some background music that's playing as well as a 20 kilohertz pilot tone coming through on this analog input. The pilot tone section is in the last little icon here. Down below we can expand the pilot tone detector and there's quite a few controls and parameters here. So very first what you want to do before you enable anything is just confirm the frequency of the tone. So it's set to 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz. That's the same as I have my tone coming into the amplifier, so that is good. If you want to use a different frequency, you can change the frequency, but you have to have the main pilot tone detector disabled, and then you can re-enable it after changing the tone frequency. So now the frequency is correct, I can enable pilot tone for the whole channel here. We have the ability to monitor pilot tone on both the input and the outputs. So first I'll take you through the input side of it here. So you can enable detection on both the primary and the secondary input for the amp. I don't have a secondary input set up on this right now, so we'll just use the primary input. So I can enable pilot tone monitoring on the input, and this is looking for the tone on the input signal that's been selected on the amplifier for the primary input. You can see just below this that there's an input present indicator here. The input level, and now it's looking at the level of just the tone frequency, and it's filtering out everything else. So you can see there's music playing, but this uh, primary uh, input level here is staying pretty solid because it's only looking at the 20 kilohertz. Below this, we've got the measured level. Now this is measuring the current in milliamps on the output of the amplifier. But before we get to the output, there's a couple other controls here for the input. So right now we're measuring about minus 28 dB of tone on the input. You can adjust the threshold for that tone to be measured on the input. So say for some reason the tone drops in signal, but it's not completely gone. You can bring your threshold in much closer to the actual measured level here. So you can adjust that independently for the primary and for the secondary input. They each have their own thresholds which trigger the present uh, detection indicators here at the top. Now for the output side of things. So we are measuring right now about 41 milliamps here. I've got a couple 70 volt speakers that are hooked up to this channel. It's all running in high Z 70 volt. So below here you can set an open limit and a short limit, again in milliamps. So the default is 80 to 100 but we're measuring only 41 milliamps at the speaker right now, so it's telling me that it's below the open limit. Well, I can bring the open limit down to just below that by click and dragging here, or I can type in a number. So it's at 41, I can bring this in really tight to the measured level, so we'll bring this down to 40. Now on the short limit, I wanna bring this pretty close as well, so if there's any variation there, it's going to trigger an event in the system. So the short limit, it has a minimum of 50. Well, that's a little bit far away from the measure tone, but we'll set it to 50 for now. What you can do to get closer to these limits, given that there's a minimum of 50 on the short limit, is you can adjust this sensitivity here. So rather than increasing the actual tone signal that's going to the speaker, meaning that there's more power going out and more driving of the actual speaker with the tone, we have this sensitivity uh, control here. So what this does is it's a way to increase the measured signal of the tone without actually sending more tone down the line to the speaker. So I can start to bring this up, or I can bring it up quite a bit, and now you can see that the measured level has increased. So I've not actually increased the tone going to the speaker, just the measurement of that with the sensitivity slider here. So you can see it's kind of locked in at around 66 milliamps here. So I'll readjust my open and short limits to get as tight to that as possible. 
So we can set the short limit to 67, so it's just above it, and the open limit to 65, which is just below. So now any variation in that measured level um, below the 65 or above the 67 is going to trigger an event to be recorded in the AMP. Now the events will get recorded after the wait period from time before error. The default is 50 seconds. For the purposes of this video, I'll bring it down to one second so we can do some testing and get some recordings in here pretty quickly on the, on the amplifier. So this is all working for sending a tone from the input through to uh, the amplifier and across. But let's say you wanna keep some separation from the tone and your input signal. So you wanna put a low pass filter on, on the channel for the amplifier. So I can go here into the crossover section. I'll turn on a low pass filter. We'll make it pretty steep. We'll do a Linkwitz Riley 48 dB per octave. And we'll put this in at 19K. So we wanna just create a little bit of separation. Well, the tone coming in is at 20K. So I've pretty much just gotten rid of the tone uh, coming in from the input. Well, what I can do now is also send a tone from the signal generator on the amp that can be measured. Before I do that, let's go back and take a look here at what we see in the pilot tone detector now. It's measuring a little bit of, uh, of signal here, but not, not a lot. So let's reintroduce a 20 kilohertz tone with the signal generator here. So we can set this to tone now, set the frequency to 20,000 hertz, and we can enable this, and we'll start to bring this up. Let's bring it up to say minus 30 dB. We can come back here to the pilot tone detector now, and you can still see nothing has changed on the readout for the input, because the crossover is after the input measurement, but you can see now we've got some different things here for the measured output level. So because we're sending the tone from the amplifier, there's still a low pass filter that's uh, working on that tone. But at the very bottom here, there's crossover bypass. So what this does is it takes the tone generator from the amplifier and bypasses the crossover so that the tone can go straight to the output without the crossover impacting it. So we can click this here now, and now you can see that the measured level is jumping back up. It's gonna settle down in just a second here. And um, yeah, now we've got a pretty stable uh, measurement on the output from the tone that's being generated by the amplifier. So lots of flexibility here to use a pilot tone being generated from another source sent through to the inputs, works on both analog and Dante inputs on the amplifier, or you can create your own tone or a combination of the two uh, together on the amplifier. So there you have it, lots of information to feed back for the pilot tone detector on the amplifier. Give it a try, let us know what you think.